know you're excited about it. Mm. How's it going, everybody? We're setting stuff up. As you can tell, someone's excited. We actually have a new styer in the house. All right. Yes, yes, I know. Well, if you all don't know, this is uh, Mishka. She's the mascot. And uh, she gets excited when we bring new guns in the house. So, that's what's going on. Guys, I'm checking on the phone. We're setting stuff up. Yes, you sit there, you can see yourself. Alright. Well, I know there's a delay in this, so y'all, uh, someone let me know. Ah, first person, thanks. Can you guys hear me okay? Oh. Oh. Yes. I'll let this roll in for a minute. You have to hop on and you can start talking and see what's going on. Ugh. All right. Well, hope everybody's having a good Friday night. Uh, probably do this live chat for uh, at least half an hour, maybe go a little bit longer. Um, hopefully, since I'm getting the camera and all set up uh, with the new live stream system we're actually doing this at uh, 5 gigahertz so hopefully the video quality is a little bit better and we won't drop out um, we got signal tonight well guys um, I've got something cool sitting on the table all right I gotta get rid of the mascot because she is super excited about something that just showed up all right hop down no, no you can't hop up I'll let you play with it in a little while oh fun Okay, then you're gonna have to sit. This is gonna be a fun one tonight, guys, for the mascot. All right, you need to sit. She normally listens pretty good. All right, guys, well, uh, from the post earlier today, you guys got to see kind of an awesome video-ish of uh, something that happened to me last week. So I am working still with the RMR slide. Um, it's kind of delayed about a week uh, for some doing some testing with, the virus and the world ending and coming back online, uh, we're getting the ranges opened up. I can get some more field time. and I don't have to shoot into the pond. Uh, if you guys saw the video and uh, shoot at sapling trees, you know, just playing and checking it out. So that's working. But uh, we'll talk a little bit of what happened on the 22nd or so. Uh, some of you guys know, I mean, I travel all over the U.S. Uh, for my day job. And I happened to be out in Oklahoma on the 22nd and was uh, physically hit by a tornado. I uh, spent a couple days uh, recuperating um, at the medical center after I got, you know, to an area that I could get checked into. So uh, that's the reason I really haven't posted a whole lot and haven't got to do a review was I was, you know, at work and then tied up with a uh, bunch of storm damage and getting hit by a uh, piece of a building and getting tossed underneath a railroad car. So if you guys kind of saw the video, uh, a tornado hit, uh, I think I think the town's pronounced Medill. It's M-A-D-I-L-L, -L, Oklahoma. Uh, check it out on YouTube. There's a really cool storm chaser video that uh, shows the for first tornado that comes across a, uh, a Walmart parking lot that hits the facility that I was at. Uh, some people were actually hurt and, you know, badly hurt. Uh, sorry for for them and you know they're going through issues you know thankfully I wasn't too too badly injured but uh it was a rough day so those things were kind of going on so this here was well thank you uh was just kind of put on the back burner so for those that have been asking and needing the information uh guys I'm hoping I'll get to writing um this upcoming week and should start doing the videos and get everything out so I'm about a week behind uh, on the RMR and everything and trying to get some more information. So with that kind of going on, uh, I mean, I won't get too much into the particulars because, you know, hurt at work and all the other fun stuff. Just let you know, I'm still upright. Uh, still got all 10 fingers, 10 toes, just kind of beat up, bruised and, uh, you know, hanging out underneath the railroad car uh, was not too much fun. So that's happening. Um, Let's see, new stuff that's going on. Um, 
actually spoke to a couple companies today. Some things are coming along with the zero to one mile project. I'm hoping middle of the month, uh, Leopold will have me uh, maybe a, get a new optic, uh, a really, really nice big one. I'm looking at a um, seven by 35 by 54 mil ejective on a 34, or sorry, 35 inch, or sorry, 35 millimeter main tube, the Mark V HD. So checking out one of those, I'm hoping that's what's gonna be showing up. Um, if everything works out, that's what I'll be getting. So working on it, uh, gonna probably go with like a sp with the spur mount, uh, plus six mils. We're doing the H59 reticle. So those things are, are progressing, uh, working on that. Uh, actually got to speak with Andy's Leathers today. Um, some cool stuff showing up and doing some work with him. Um, looking into suppressors, um, I've got two companies in mind that I got to test with Alabama Arsenal on that front. So we'll see if they want to do some work with me. If not, it's going to be uh, which one price point and works better. I mean, I like the two. I'll just got to look at, you know, how much it's going to cost and possibly we'll have suppressors. So like I said, that project's progressing. We're working, you know, emails cross country, cross, you know, the globe on different companies or, you know, with everybody. So it, it's coming along. I'll keep you all updated and how that goes. This, uh, is really cool. So about two weeks ago, um, you know, being stuck in the house and doing bad things looking on the internet, um, I happened to come across a Steyr GB. And if you can hear my wife, she's snickering in the background going, yep, you, you shouldn't have been on the internet. So bad things can happen. Uh, so I come across a, uh, a gentleman that had one and got to look in and kind of, you know, I've been wanting to replace one. Uh, this will actually be my third one in my lifetime uh, that I've personally owned or had my possession. So some things happened, uh, some really nice things happened and this showed up, uh, at the local FFL and I got to pick it up today. So, you know, can't show guns on YouTube, you know, policy stuff, but parts and pieces and stuff, we can talk about it. So, uh, I'll post some awesome pictures. We'll kind of talk about the Steyr GB if you're unfamiliar. Uh, these guns were built from about 1978, 79-ish uh, to 1986. Uh, there was only 20,000 of the GBs made uh, for the world. Uh, this gun was when Gaston uh, from Glock started the military trials. This was the actual gun that was submitted to the U.S. when Beretta, the M92, the Glock, the first generation of Glock in the, what, 19, I think it was 1984, 1985? Don't hold me to it. I, I can't remember the last one. Um, so this was one of the last pistols that I'm aware of that Steyr's actually introduced and put into military trials for the U.S. Um, it didn't go over well. There were some production things. There was another company. There's a gun that is literally a clone of a Steyr GB called the P38 uh, Rourke. And I think I'm pronouncing the Rourke the right way. It's spelt real funny. Um, basically, it looks like a Steyr GB, but it's all stainless. And they were total junk. I mean, the guns did not work. There was a bunch of licensing fiascos and like all types of stuff went weird and about 1984 um steyer shipped the first batch of the gbs and actually you know got them here into the united states uh it is a nine millimeter uh gas it's a delayed gas uh blowback so uh it's it functions really different from any other pistol there's an hk and i believe a walter uh the hk squeezecock uh, if you remember uh, from Die Hard, uh, the bad guy had the squeezecock gun. Not Carl with the AUG, but uh, Hans Gruber. Uh, the squeezecock was basically set up the, in the same way. Uh, the barrel system on this is solid. 
and in the front of the barrel it actually has its neck down and it has three uh, sorry two uh, this one's a two port there's a two port and a three port design and what happens when the slides on this the gas goes forward uh, very similar to like your AR you know to do a blowback but it pressurizes the slide and holds the slide in place uh, for the round to totally go out and before it moves so it, it's a delayed uh, reaction on the slide assembly so it's it shoots really really good for for the weight of the gun the, the design um, these things are, are pretty awesome uh, the other interesting thing with this gun uh, well a couple things but in general for the for the GB is this barrel actually has polygonal rifling the the same that Steyr put into like the big ship guns uh, Glock I think still does it but uh, it's one of the only styres that it does not have traditional rifling or mandrel, you know, forged, uh, uh, the forged rifling. It actually has a polygonal uh, system in it, into it. The other really interesting thing on this gun is actually the hammer. Uh, this is what they call a rooster spur. And these were the military version. Um, in the 20,000 that were made, only about 500 of these actually have a hammer spur. They were two things with these. The black versions were the military slash civilians. If you ever see one of these that's kind of like an OD green, like what's on an ammo can, uh, that is a true military, and there's only 30 of those ever made uh, for the world. I don't know how many are in the U.S. I don't know where they're off to, but there's only 30. So if you ever come across a Steyr GB that is this weird OD green color, um, and it's not been seracoded. There's there's a set of serial numbers that's specialized that it's only 30. But with this one, with the spur hammer, was a later model, which was had an improved trigger. They did some upgrades. But this was actually a military version, and there's only about 500 of these. So that's pretty cool. I'll uh, show you some of their components. Let's see. 190 IGB stuff makes barrels. Uh, yes, they do. I've actually uh, checked them out. You can actually get Steyr GB barrels. I think they're right around 300 euros. Hey, everybody. Hey, so. So, Jark, how are you? Wes, how are you? Um, this here is actually a part of the gas system, which is actually, um, if you're familiar with like your GI 45, this is the, the barrel nut lock and keeps the slide and the barrel everything in line and holds your guide rod which is a solid one piece but this cup when the gas goes forward it actually goes here and holds before letting the slide uh, operate and it's actually got a three lug design on the front here that goes into the bottom of the slide and it, locks, it latches in it's about about a half inch uh, inside but the uh, this is one of the Steyr pistols that does not have trapezoid sights. It actually has a welded in three dot system and a pinned rear dovetail. So that's that. Um, trying to think on this one, guys. Uh, I pulled the date codes. Uh, actually, let me pull the date code right now. Uh, you guys got any questions? Want to know something or, you know, something I can answer for you? For you, hit me up. And you know, free-for-all, whatever you guys want to talk about. I just kind of wanted to show you this, tell you what was going on. Say hello. Give me just a second. Granted, I did look this up earlier, but I want to make sure I do it the correct way. All right. This one, uh, for the ship date and the, the three-letter, if you guys are familiar, or you should be familiar with, like, your standard uh, A1s and A2s, I'm um, doing the date codes. But the breakdown for this one is October which will be C, it will be T of 8, M, as 5. So this one was actually stamped 1985 uh, for October. Now the serial number dates uh, on these particular ones, the GBs were a little bit different. I'll explain that because I know some people were looking for it. And there's not, I have not come across, if somebody has a better solution... Uh, for the date coding of the styres, let me know on the on these GBs. But if memory serves me right, the original stamping, basically the serial number of these, 
was a P for proof mark. And since these were all technically Austrian guns, they weren't built for the US, they could start the serial numbers at one. So the first 30 were the green militaries. And then the number should be 30, should be like 0, 30, uh, 31 and go up. But it comes out of this particular gun would be gun 16,280. So that's how that goes. And you can also tell on the side of the beast, you get a good one. On the top of the side, it has the importer uh, stamp mark, kind of like your class three, you know, serial that's been etched into it. There are some, and I don't know why they did it, but they did it on the side over the Austrian, uh, where it says made in Austria, and it actually uh, hides your date code and stuff. So on a collector standpoint, if you want to buy one of these just to shoot it, just buy one. Um, they're kind of expensive, but it's it's price of emission. So if you want one, you got to pay for it. If you want a nice one, like this particular one, and I've been looking like, like five years before buying one, um, try to get one that's got the uh, Importer South. It actually says Gun South of Trussellville, Alabama. Try to get one that's got it on the top of the slide so you can still have your date codes and serial number. So... Alrighty, uh, Nathan, I just picked up my first AUG A3. What is the difference with the A3 and M1? Okay, well, the, the A3, um, I've actually got one sitting over here. The A3 is the newest variant. That one actually has, on the receiver, it is, if it's a flat top, it actually has the mount that's removable. Uh, so you can put on the factory optic. That's basically, it's just, it's the newest version of the AUG. If you had the A1, that's your original STG 77. I mean, that's the one that Carl had in Die Hard. The receiver and the scope are all one piece. There's no way to remove it. An A2 um, had a real funky uh, front end on it. Um, that were flat tops. And to, to put an optic on one was like a real pain. They didn't. They didn't stick around very long that I'm aware of, but the, the A3, when you look at your receiver and uh, you can actually pull the flat top off, I've done some videos. It's three uh, torque heads inside your receiver that hold on if it's a flat top or an optics version, and that's interchangeable. So it's just the newest one. Uh, preferably, um, if you have the opportunity, unless you're a collector and want one from like the 70s or 80s. Um, I personally really like to shoot and I much more enjoy the A3 um, over the A2 or A1 version. Uh, da, 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 let's see. Um, uh, oh, well here, I'll ask you guys since most of you all are Steyr fans. If somebody by chance uh, you can email me at tnstire at gmail.com. You can DM me, you know, get in contact with me. If you happen to come across any of the mags for a GB, now, granted, I know they're expensive. I'm not talking like the astronomical, like someone's got them on Gunbroker now, like $350 a piece. I know these mags are expensive, but I would, I've got two mags with this one. I would like, you know, I'd like to get at least one more, possibly two. So if you happen to have one, you don't mind getting rid of it, you know, reasonably, you know, realistic price, I'm interested. The other thing I'm looking for, the, the sadly with this particular gun, um, it did not have a box or the cleaning rods. If you happen to know somebody or you come across them, uh, please let me know. I'm, I'm interested because I'd like just to put as much as I can with this one. I know the box would not match for serial number, but I would like to have it for uh, wall art. The other cool thing with this one is it actually uh, has a brand new magazine, which I could not believe. I went to open this and the plastic is actually uh, heat sealed. I can't get this open unless I totally destroy it. But uh, looking at this mag through the bag, it's uh, it looks like it's brand new. I don't think this mag's ever been inserted. So that's kind of awesome, and I don't want to say sad at one point, but it's like, man, whoever had this before me and everything, just he only used the one mag. I'm kind of surprised it didn't get more more attention. 
Um, I plan on shooting it, so it's going to get some time and it's going to be a fun gun. Neat. Oh, you're welcome, man. Not a problem. If you got any other thing with the with the AUG, let me know. I'll walk you in directions if you need help with doing anything or want to know about something. Uh, thoughts on the trigger upgrades? Okay, well that's actually been going on a whole bunch here recently. The all right, well you, you have your AUG, you know, or you should you should understand how the trigger system works on it. It's on. Uh, bars that have to push through the stock. It's not like a Geisley trigger in an AR. So there is some tension things to do. Um, I've, I'll have i make a video and show you guys how to tune one, but basically it's setting up the trigger bars. Now, complete aftermarket, you know, different trigger packs, different, you know, components. There is the Ratworks 2020 uh, trigger pack. There's... I think Gearhead Works was working on one when I talked to them two shot shot shows ago. They were working on a complete trigger pack system, and Corvo's Defense has been developing one for like five years now. Um, I'm I'm still on a waiting list to get one. I don't think they're available in the U.S. I don't know if they're available in Austria. Um, I need, actually need to send them an email, so I will do that for my own personal use and find out info to tell you guys. Some people say putting the uh, 2020 sear in one makes it better. Um, I don't know. I mean, price point, I know they're expensive. You're talking like five or $600 for one of the 2020 sears. The last time I saw one, I think someone just bought like two of them here the other day and told me about it. I've shot the guns with and without them. And honestly... Uh, my gun, I built it at Steyr uh, during all the armorers courses and, you know, the opportunity to build inside. And I've set my trigger up, I've shot my gun, and I've done the trigger, the bar, the adjustments and everything. Uh, I still run a factory trigger pack. I can't honestly tell you that one is better. And I'm sure someone's going to comment, yes, yes, they're better. I've shot both. I prefer mine. Uh, I just... For the money, the investment, um, I would definitely buy the Corvo's Defense mag release button and probably a case deflector. And I'd put the rest of the money into ammo, shoot it. Once you start wearing in that trigger pack, it gets a lot better. Uh, you heard hammer right works, for example. Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen them. I, I just, like I said, I, I like mine. I've got time. I've probably got 5,000 rounds through mine. Um, it's polished. Now that is one thing you can do to the trigger pack is if you kind of polish up the connection points in it, uh, in basically the same way that I do the high speed polish on the, uh, pistols, on the polymer pistols, that will actually help. So, um, I, I'm, uh, sorry, I, I really can't give you a better answer just because I don't own one and... I haven't invested. I've just got to shoot other guns with it. So it's kind of a 50-50 is about the best honest answer I can give you. Um, I'm trying to think of any other, let's see, Steyr update. Okay, uh, Steyr update news on the A2MF. Because there's one sitting over here. Uh, guys, I heard a rumor, and I actually, just before starting this uh, live stream, saw the Puerto Rico importer, the, the gentleman that, that actually does all that. He's the, the country's importer for Steyr. Um, they're still waiting on them, but I've heard a rumor. Um, I have calls and emails into Steyr USA and Steyr Austria for clarification, but they're talking with the world shut down, shipping like you know everything that's going on and it's not really an excuse for them but I'm, I'm telling you you know facts and what i've heard they're talking july or august the m model will be out and the next big batch shipment which is like something like five thousand of the l a2s uh, i don't know how many of the m's are going to be available uh, last I had heard, they, they sold like twelve or 1500 had already been pre-ordered and bought, so uh, I know those are all going out. I, I still don't have an M, but I had heard 
like I said, it's a rumor. I'm trying to get an actual from the company, like, hey, this is true or not, or at least, you know, a wink and a nod. So, so far, that, that email response has not come back on uh, July or August. Now, for sure, open house is in August. We'll have to see what the dates are. I would really hope that there'd be some guns uh, there. So I'll keep you guys updated on that front. Um, let's see. Thanks. Do you know if the EG parts kit from Apex or Games will work? Uh, okay, the, the AUG parts kits, um, most of the time that's everything but a receiver. So it's, it's not the actual receiver. You, yes, the barrel will work. Doesn't matter what AUG generation you have in year. The barrels are the same. They'll work just fine. The stock assembly uh, would be an older one. There shouldn't be any issue. Not that I'm aware of. You could use an older stock. The trigger pack will work. Um, if you needed to pull the... Well, I don't think you can really pull out the bars the right way. But, I mean, if you could, you could cannibalize that. Um, the flash hiders and stuff, like, all that will interchange. But, uh, I mean, bolt, bolt carrier group would be the same on the rails and everything. It's literally just the top of the receiver if it's milled for uh, different upper assemblies or if it's a one-piece. That's basically it. The AUG really hasn't changed. Um, now, with one of those older parts kits, you might get a different barrel with a different twist rate. There's... One in seven, eight, and nine. And it also would be uh, depend on length. But uh, the biggest thing on parts kits, uh, please spread the word. Tell anybody that ever wants to look at an AUG, you cannot. Like, it just does not happen. You cannot buy just a receiver. Steyr doesn't sell them. There's no aftermarket companies. Nobody mills them. Nothing. Um... So far this year, I've had like three people contact me that have spent good money and they cannot get a receiver. There's like zero chance on this planet. The only way you're going to get a receiver is if somebody happens to have an extra one or a gun was broke or they parted one out for some reason. Like, I have not seen an AUG receiver sold on the open market, like just the receiver itself, uh, ever. So the whole time I've been playing with Styres, like I've never seen just a receiver. Uh, so please don't buy a parts kit thinking you're gonna build it like an AR. Uh, you'll s you'll cry later. Trust me. Uh, oh, sorry guys, I got a little allergies going on. Oh. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, not a problem. Uh, something that's really cool if you, if you, when you buy your AUG, do think about um, what color you want, because if you try to, if if you're OCD and you're trying to match colors, uh, the mud works really well. Black's always good, but a white AUG or the boat orange ones are kind of the rare ones to get. But those colors too, if you're gonna really field the rifle, um, you're gonna stick out like really bad. So, uh, you know, white, the orange are kind of the rare colors. Uh, mud, black, and the green are your standard colors. And then after that, you just need to decide, do you want to go with the standard uh, AUG or the NATO version, which takes the AR mags, which I've got a whole video debate. You know, just depends what you want to do. I much prefer buy the standard, you know, non-NATO AUG that has your bolt lock. Buy the SA, uh, SAI mags and go that route. Granted, there's P-Mags and you might have a ton of AR mags, but uh, personal preference, if I would tell you, if you ask me which one you're gonna, you should buy, do not buy the one that takes the AR mags. Buy the standard AUG, because all the Corpos parts fits, all the upgrades, the internals, uh, you can be happier. But if you got 2,000 AR mags and you wanna shoot those, uh, buy one of the parts kits, get that stock assembly, the extra barrel, and just pull the receiver and you can switch between the two. So you'll have the parts. Uh, cool. Oh, Let's see what else is going on. I'm trying to think of something else that's happening, different stuff. Oh, um... If for anybody that would possibly, 
uh, Cole Steyer News. If you guys are interested at all in 357 SIG, I'm telling you now, you need to go over to Ranger Point and go buy a barrel. Um, I talked to them this week. Uh, they are not ever, unless like I can persuade them with a stack of hundreds, um, going to produce the 357 SIG barrels again. They have M models, and that's it. If you want one, I would very much recommend go to their website and buy it right now. Uh, I would not be even disappointed if you leave my stream and go to their website. So if you're interested at all and you want one of those barrels, you better buy it now because when they're done, they're done. Um, I've done everything I can to help, you know, the aftermarket world and keep that going. And they're not going to produce barrels. I just tried to order and talk to them about having some more L barrels made because I want to do some LA2s. And I was, even with my connection and in with the company, I was told no. So, it, that, there's your kind of an update thing. They've also got the uh, thread protectors. Uh, do you think Styrotter make a bigger butt pad or a uh, Yes, I know it's funny. Uh, okay, on the butt pad. Good evening. Hey, MD Polo. Man, how are you? Uh, on the butt pad, no. I actually had somebody ask if the MRAD, uh, which is basically, it's a clone of a Steyr, um, if the MRAD butt pad would work, because supposedly it's a little bit thicker. Um, honestly, I don't have one. I, I haven't had one in person. Uh, the last person I knew that had one and... I didn't know to ask him was uh, Honest Outlaw. Uh, I I guess I could message him and see if he still has that MSAW and have him pull some measurements. But as far as I know, no, that's the only butt pad uh, for the AEG. Uh, so only S or M's for the barrels are left. Okay, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, if you want one, like, I, I'm, I'm not kidding, guys. Like, I've got five people on standby if I can come up with an L barrel um that like they'll they'll buy just I gotta tell them what the price is I mean they, they don't care there's an open check on those L barrels and I can't not get any more so if the, when those come in I, I notify and go down a list so if you want one for the M uh you know you have an opportunity to buy it pretty cheap right now the on 40s uh all right so when the A2 was released, Steyr's stance at that time at SHOT Show was 40 caliber is dead. Uh, no police departments are using them. The FBI is not using them. The government switched all from back, all back to 9mm. So they were not going to make the new A2 and 40. Now they did leave it open. If you're familiar, uh, right around Gen 2 to Gen 3, they used to be upper parts kits, which was basically a new slide, a barrel, and guide rod. And they came in the different calibers. That's where you, the original 357 SIG pistol in Gen 2 came from. And I believe in Gen 1 they, they, they played with them. But like Gen 2 they perfected. And then Gen 3 they had a couple. I'm hoping with the MF with it being, you know, multifunction. Supposed to be the transformer gun. I'm hoping that's what they're going to do. To give everybody the 40 caliber uh, component. So... We'll have to wait and see. There's also supposed to be new frames, different colors, shot show. Or for this year, it'll be uh, their open house. Uh, I'll ask about it. But after that, I think with all the new executives and people running, it'll probably be shot show for 2021, which, fingers crossed, the world gets back to normal. Uh, you guys will see me back out at shot show for 2021. The other thing you can do is buy yourself... Any Gen 2, 3, or 4 Steyr 40 caliber in, you know, an M model or, an, you know, S, you know, whatever you want. Uh, preferably, I, I tell people, buy the, the 4th Gen, which would be the one with the roll pin. Buy it in an L or an M. Buy up a 40, and when you get your A2, pull a slide. The whole upper assembly will go right in. It's... I mean, yes, the ejection port is a little bit different on the A2. It's cut a little bit wider, and the extractor is a little bit different. 
Uh, it's a little bit sharper, but the actual slide will all fit. Uh, everything goes right in. That's in the picture. That's actually what uh, this slide is. Here, it's an A1 slide that I put on the A2. It works perfectly. You would never know the difference unless you looked at the side markings. So that's how uh, a lot of people. And remember, I told everybody that over a year ago to do it. So hopefully, you've listened and you've kind of bought up the 40s. The uh, somebody asked me again today on the A2s. I know there's limited numbers, but uh, direct hit guns and ammo. Um, I've posted their links. Uh, it's I've put it around. They're taking orders for the A2s. They have some. They've been. I mean, that's who I've been telling everybody to go to. Um, after that, when they come available and the shipment comes in, uh, V. What is it? It's uh, it's VT Service Group. Uh, is the Puerto Rico arms dealer. Uh, he's on the Facebook Steyer, you know, forums and pages and stuff. Uh, he's another good contact. If you're, you know, West Coast or, you know, in Puerto Rico and you need a gun. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Let's see. I'm trying to think of something else. Uh, what do you guys... Oh, well, here's something. I mean, you guys can help me out. What, what type of... Review work, what do you guys want to know about? What do you want me to do more of? Uh, I always need input. So, granted, I'm getting the live streams and, you know, kind of been doing this a little bit more. You know, questions and answers. But what do you guys want to see? Um, I have got some other uh, pistols and rifles and stuff that I own. And I have plans on doing it. But you guys have a some type of mashup? There's there something particular you want to know about or see or have me do? Uh you know, let me know. I mean, comment, text me, email me, tell me what you guys want to see. Uh, see what I can come up with. I think on this uh, GB, um, I'll be going to the range tomorrow and doing some test firing, and uh, I'll get you all some video of it, kind of show you how the gas system works. I'm trying to think of anything else. Uh, cool with this thing. Um, kind of got give you guys uh, an interesting look. Uh, I mean, Steyr really stays true to their uh, the way they do things. They don't change a whole lot. Uh, here's the actual shot card on this particular gun, and it's it's a sticker, and I can actually feel the uh, the impacts where they fired one, two, three, four. There's five rounds at 10 meters. That's pretty cool. So there's the actual shot card for this gun. And kind of a cool, you know, breakdown of how all the components and parts are. But what I thought was really interesting in this particular gun is the actual warranty and lifetime, or I should say in here, the limited lifetime warranty, the, the card's never been filled out. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. I want to see style. Still frame. Uh, granted, it's not on the pistol, but at one time, if you worked for. Uh, military or police, this was like a year ago, I know they were doing some trade-ins for AUGs. So if you got your department or they, they were doing something like law enforcement, they also did it on like the SSG, the THB system, like on the big bolt action guns. So if you happen to be in law enforcement and you can get your department to switch over, uh, contact Steyr. They were doing some cool stuff the last time I talked to their uh, military and LEO rep. Uh, they were doing some cool stuff in uh, Tennessee and Alabama. They were setting up police departments and agencies. So, maybe. Uh, what's different color pistols? Um, I can do that. I've got a green and desert tan. I think I got a pink one. Um, if you haven't seen the VF1, it's multicolored and white, and yeah, I think I can do some different colored stuff on different platforms. What Steyr Academy course have you not taken? 
Oh, the Academy course. Uh, I have not taken yet, but I'm on the schedule in the books for it. I'm doing SPR, uh, the Precision Rifle courses with uh, Eduardo Fond du Lac. I'll be doing all three of those. I'm um, set up supposed to be next, should be next month, July, June, June or July. I'm supposed to be going to one of those first ones. So technically, yes, I have not taken those three classes and I have not taken the AUG carbine class. Um, I've taken all the armors classes. Um, there was a couple private classes and tutoring things to, to do, but that's, that's really it. Um, you know, I've got my armor certifications. I, I set all that up originally, but, uh, so I guess at the moment, just this, the SPR, uh, one, two, three class and the carbine, uh, class. And there is a special class, but you have to complete all, all Steyr education before you can do and apply for King of Two Mile. So that's kind of where I'm at with the zero to one mile program is gearing up um, maybe, uh, I don't want to say next year, but you know, within maybe the next two years, um, I'm going to try out possibly to go for, to compete with the King of Two Mile after I complete all the school and education. Let's DI. Uh, West DI. I don't know what you mean by DI, man. Um, I think you're coming around, so you'll have to ask me in person or, or clarify. I'm stuck in traffic. Oh. Uh, wow, everything with the GB seems like pristine. Uh, yes, I mean, like, super, super on this thing. Uh, I kind of, guys, I'm going down the list, so just keep uh, keep asking questions. With this gas system, you know, shooting 9mm is not the cleanest thing in the world, so it gets a ton of car uh, carbon buildup. So if you guys see pictures, this barrel is supposed to be um, all silver like this, but normally they're coated in carbon. But uh, all the wrinkle finish, and, and I'll really do a nice tabletop and explain everything on this gun, but, I mean, there's like zero around the gas port and the lockup. There's almost zero buildup, and I don't know if you guys will be able to see see down in depth where I can light it up some, but I mean there's just nothing. Up. This thing's just it it is super super clean, and it's not like I don't think someone actually professionally cleaned it because there's still oil and grease hidden in certain spots, so it wasn't like it was sonic tanked or something. And there's no tool marks on this barrel. And it actually does have the proof marks which match the stamps on the slide. So this is the factory barrel. And that was like a big thing for me was, since there is the, the original company that made these barrels are still in production, was making sure that the stamp marks were correct. So that's totally awesome that there's no tooling wrench marks on this. And that the, uh, the stamps work. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna hear me, uh, do old school, new school, shooting and breakdown video. Okay, I mean, I can work on a new school and old school, you know, style video. I'm assuming new school 1911 breakdown. Yeah, I mean, I've got some older, some older stuff. I mean, I can kind of show pistol differences and, you know, maybe some technique differences that I've changed that I'm familiar with. Uh, Steyr long range rifles. Well, I'm working on it. Uh, I'll get some pictures and I'll, I'm still setting up my office and I'm trying to figure out a display system, like, so I can actually put my stuff out here. Uh, I've been looking at like hold up displays and, uh, gun wall. So maybe if you guys have, uh, personal use with like, you know, uh, a showing system or a rack system for your wall, I'm looking about buying one and building into one, but I've got my... Uh, STG, or sorry, no, it's not, it's not the STG, it's an SSG 08A1, it's one of four in the gold, and 308, that's my big, uh, zero to one mile gun, so it's, it's coming, just let me get some optics put onto it, kind of make it look a little bit more than just a base rifle with everything, uh, if you guys check out, I've got Mr. H's posted up, he's got some really cool stuff going on with his, and his is super, super similar to mine. 
Will Steyer offer a pistol class? Um, there was talk on doing a pistol class. There is a, a introduction uh, class for pistols. And that was kind of one of the like first set of classes. I'm not sure if they're still doing it. I'll have to I'll have to check. Or you can go over to Steyer uh, USA, pull up the website, look in the classes. There was one. But basically, it was like an introduction to pistol firearms, and they took you out and taught you. Um, it was you know if you were unfamiliar, you know how to do a standard breakdown, how to clean it, how to load it, how to unload it safely. It was just kind of like a an intro class, but it really wasn't. Um, like a shooting class. It was more, you know, sit down, sit at a table, and they kind of showed you some things, and uh, you might have went out to their, their personal range and maybe put a mag through a gun. And that's basically about it. 10 millimeter. Okay, um, I have been on Steyr for five years. Um, I do have a company. Um, pretty much gave me, a, a, you know, their... The handshake guarantee, and it's a good company that's built parts for Steyr stuff. If we can get a 45, a Steyr, you know, a, you know, MF and 45, they said they will build even if it's just a barrel in 10 millimeter. Um, so far, if unless there is a government demand for 10 millimeter or 45 or like a huge, huge order for a uh, police department, like I don't think so, guys. Um, I've been on that one for a while. AEG and 300 Blackout. Check out for the ones they did. They did a... Oh, cool. Uh, Alright, I'll check out Ian's video at Forgotten Weapons. Uh, dun -dun -dun. Cool, I will, will actually look into that. Uh, AUG and 300 Blackout. Yes, well, it's been built. Uh, yes, it's been demoed and shown but it has not gone into production. Um, that was actually supposed to happen this year um, from the old CEO of the United States, uh, Steyer. And it hasn't happened that I'm aware of yet. I was hoping this year at SHOT Show they were going to show that. Um, I, I don't have any new update on it. I, I've got pictures of one. I've actually seen one in person. Like I physically have touched one. Um, I know it exists. But that was also like the um, STG, which was basically Steyr's entry into like an AR platform. Um, I've got pictures, I've touched one, I've shot one, but th they just never have come out yet. I don't know if there's a production issue, if there's a quantity, I, I just don't know. They just haven't released it yet. Um, I know like on their AR platform that all went back to retooling because it didn't meet the military standard. Uh, for the contract that they were wanting it it was I think it was a little bit too heavy or they wanted an extra feature and they had to redesign it and that's back in R&D and some t &E work doing on it the 300 blackout um, as far as I know it's still an R&D concept it's I think there's like five or six um, that were made that they battle tested and beat on blew one up because I, I actually saw the one that uh, they blew up intentionally so, uh, I'll send you a link. Cool. Uh, thanks. Yeah, it started coming through. Okay, guys. Well, um, it's getting towards that time. I'm checking out my battery on the camera. I don't want to just drop the live stream and like what happened last time. But uh, the battery system's starting to get to that point. And we've been going for almost 50 minutes. So the live stream is only good for an hour um, at, the, at this current point. So we'll kind of get in to wrap things up. Uh, I'll stick around here for the next 10 minutes and if you guys got some more questions or uh, something else to kind of go go on about I can tell you let's uh, I'm trying to think here in my book of goodies let's see the armor's class let's see I'm checking to see if I've ha got any notes for that pistol class in the models no, nope, that's size. This is my master cheat sheet book. Okay, not there. That is. That's the housing group, the Corvos defense. 
And see, that's just the rail. I thought I might have had a uh, picture of the 300 blackout in here or the breakdown diagram of it. Um, da -da. Let's see. Um, I'll kind of show you this picture here for a second. Um, this here is the A3 uh, receiver. These are the three bolts I'm telling you about and the way they go into the receiver. This is what is different between an A2 and A1 compared to your A3. It's literally the way it's milled right here. Uh, for this upper, your Picatinny rail system, your rail long, short, or medium, um, this is what is, is different between those two. But all of your internals, um, all the firing pin controls, your charge handle, all of that is uh, still the same. So that, that's what's different. And if you're interested, you want to see a, like a decent diagram picture, just send me a message and I'll, uh, I'll take a picture and send it to you. No, sorry guys, I don't have that, uh, those pictures are in another binder or something else, some place else. Do you know a place in the U.S. that makes aftermarket mags for the, um, a f okay, um, f on, on the mags, there's no one that makes a direct fit, you know, buy it and it works perfectly, but MMP, the, you know, standard uh, MMP mags, you can cut a mag release slot into one and they work. Pro Mag makes one, but after that, uh, there's no one that I'm aware of that has a direct replacement, uh, you know, buy it and go mag. You, you have to mod one. Uh, so I don't have one for that. Uh, we'll stire. I'm hoping so. There are some uh, 9mm conversion kits for AUGs. Um, if you guys check out the, uh, let's see, it's the Hillbilly on Instagram. Uh, he, he's got one. Um, I'm trying to see if I can get uh, time to go visit him. He's just up in uh, Kentucky. So I'm trying to get some time to actually go see one in person. I've taken pictures. There's, there's pictures on my Facebook and I think I posted some on Instagram of that kit, but uh, they're out there and available. They're just kind of super expensive. Uh, be prepared for a 9mm AUG conversion kit to be somewhere in the neighborhood of $2,000. The 15 round mags, uh, not that I'm aware of. Uh, I saw somebody check out styreclub.com. Uh, hop on, hop on there. There's a decent uh, group of guys that sell and buy through that site um, across the U.S. Uh, sometimes those guys get rid of those mags and they want the the 10 rounders for the state that they live in, or they've just got some old stock. So as far as I know, they're not bringing back the 15 round mags. Uh... Yes, please take uh, any info on the... Okay, Nate, um, I think you said you sent me a link. Uh, da, da, da. Nope, that was somebody else. Uh, Nate, uh, send me an email or Facebook me uh, directly so I can I can send you those pictures. Uh, I'll send you a, a picture of you know what the receivers look like. Um... I'm actually... Um, writing and helping out of you said for that precision armor's guide i'm actually uh working right now on the whole um S sbf system which is a safe bolt system i'm actually uh writing that program and going to turn it into the lead instructor which is edgardo fondelac and that should be the third armor's course uh which hopefully i'll actually have written a book on but uh, i'm working on that one um it was kind of a private class that was taught. He, you know, showed me some things with it. Um, maybe I'll actually even do a video and show you guys how to uh, disassemble down the safe bolt system and show how it works. Uh, um, on the lower height version, 
for the scope, uh, da -da. I haven't, I haven't heard of anything. Um, there was a option for the flat tops. Granted, I don't think I've ever seen one personally, um, but you can see pictures of it it's on their website. Uh, I'll see if I can even post a picture of it. But there was a removable optic. It was a, it was a three power that went on your flat top rail. Um, I, I'll dig for a picture. I'll post up it. As soon as I can find it, I will post a picture of it. But there was one. It literally, uh, the bottom of the optic uh, had a mount system that was a quick detach. So if you see any of their promotional pictures with the military, that's what they're using. Um, it might just been an Austrian thing. I haven't seen one in the States because I kind of like one. Uh, I have the standard three power that's on the rail system. But there, there is one. I'll see if I can get a picture of it. Um, that might be what you're referring to. MD, all right, hey man, have a good one. I'll catch up with you. Uh, we need to get together and go shooting. I know you're not too far from the house. Uh, maybe I can get a range day close by you or you come down to Nashville. Uh, definitely, I want to see that that uh, Finks that you've been shooting. The thing looks interesting. Yeah, uh, I'll show you. I'll do a, a video on the safe bolt system, and the safe bolt system works, and that's uh, it goes all the way through the um, S SG sixty nine, the Scout, the THB, the Pro Hunters, the uh, SSG line uh, from the O four O eight. Uh, I think the only one it does not touch on is the HS fifty, because uh, that's just a big bolt action. I mean, it's just it's an anti vehicle rifle. Um, I'm the Hivez site. Uh, maybe in another live stream, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, that's actually something I'm working on uh, with a company and have been for like a year. I'm trying to get uh, trapezoid night sights built and possibly trapezoid suppressor height sights built. So if that interests you, let me know at the end of this video. Like put in there that interests you. Um, it's something I'm working on, but it's uh, it's a minimum order and it's 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 expensive to get the tooling done. Um, it's in the same world and aggravation as what's taking me to get the 357 SIGs uh, built. But as far as I know, Steyr themselves, they're not doing one. Um, I've been working in the aftermarket world talking to people. Uh, let me go down here and check you guys out. All right, guys. Well... My red light has come on on my camera, so I've hit like within the two minute mark and my battery is going to probably be kaput, so yay. Uh, da -da, Phil. Good on you. Trying guys. I'm, I'm trying to get some other stuff in aftermarket world. Um, I've even started uh, contemplating the idea of actually producing uh, some parts, so maybe here in the next six months uh, I might actually produce... Um, the aftermarket parts myself on the things that I like that I think that need to be done. Um, if I can't get other companies to invest or take up the time uh, on their side, put their name behind it, uh, I might just do it myself. Uh, maybe guide rods or compensators or something. So it's it's a thought process. That makes me I try to go front side. Cool. Okay, guys. Well. I'm going to put it out and say goodnight to everybody. Um, the last one here, last question I'm going to get to at the moment. Uh, somebody says uh, AR triangle front sight with a titanium temp could be company. Cool. Uh, I'll get with you and, and look that up and check it out. So, well, that'll work. And I appreciate everybody, you know, hanging out tonight and, you know, the questions. Like, this is... This is starting to get a lot better, and hopefully the video quality, everything worked really well. And I'll talk to you guys. We'll shoot some pictures, and I'll touch base with everybody uh, over this weekend. Everybody, I told you I'd send you stuff. Trust me, I do. I really try to answer you guys' questions and, and interact personally all the time. So if I can help you all, you need something, you guys know how to get in t uh, contact with me. Shoot me that email. DM me. You know, you can call as long as it's a reasonable hour, and uh, check it out. All right, I'm going to call it a good night, and I can smell dinner cooking.
ないよ。